me as on of date this date of this call these statements are not the guarantees of future performances and involves risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict as a reminder all participant line will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need an assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your touch tone telephone please note that this conference is being recorded i now hand the conference over to mr vinay sanghi chairman and managing director of cartrade tech limited thank you and over to you sir thank you uh, good afternoon everybody and welcome to uh, cartrade's uh, you know q2 uh, earnings call um i want to you know we of course we've uploaded a presentation and the financials uh, for all of you to see in advance um i just want to start off with saying that it's been a good quarter for the company um in this quarter we've achieved the highest ever revenue and you know profit before tax in any quarter um we're the number one automotive platform in india uh, across use classifieds horizontal classifieds and of course in vehicle auctions um we receive almost 77 million monthly active users on across all our platforms car wale bike wale olx etc um we i think what you know is more remarkable that drives the performance of the company is 95% of these users come through organic sources which means we don't pay for these users to come onto the platform we are now covering almost 150 plus physical locations um we auction at a rate of 1.4 million vehicles a year revenue for the quarter is at 172 crores which is the highest ever as i said adjusted ebitda uh, is at 57 crores 56.8 crores which is also our highest ever Uh, profit after tax is 31 almost 31 crores and you know as as you know we have strong cash balance debt free with about 832 crores of surplus cash um if we go to the consolidated results uh, which is um, on on page 6 uh, as i said our revenue is 172 crores uh, revenue has grown by 27% uh, in the in q2 over last year um half yearly revenue is at 328 crores which is grown by 35% year on uh, uh, you know year on year so the six month results showing a 35% growth in revenue if you see our margins the ebitda margin ebitda is up at 32.7 crores for the quarter and the ebitda margin jumped from 15% last quarter to 21% which shows the leverage in the business the increase in revenue you know what we are able to demonstrate is an improvement in our operating and ebitda margins um as you can see even the ebitda is up on 21.58 last quarter which is almost a 50% jump in ebitda quarter on quarter uh 54% jump from last year um uh, and half yearly the ebitda jump 104% 54.28 crores consolidated from 26.65 crores last year and then therefore you see the margin gone up on 11% to 17% half yearly uh pdt is up by 44% to 37.14 crores uh for the quarter and 61.29 crores for 6 months which is up 48% uh you know uh, half yearly uh, from last year um and and that's what shows the leverage of the business uh, you know a 35% increase in revenue resulting in a 48% growth in in a profit before tax uh packed uh, for the year uh, for the quarter first time the 30.72 crores which is up 500% from last year and 53.62 half yearly uh which is up 189% from last year 18.55 crore so generally you've seen a very strong set of revenue and profit growth with, with increase in margins uh, across all uh, you know uh, across all periods um if you look at adjusted ebitda which is just removing the soft cost and adding uh, you know the interest income it's at all time high of 56.81 crores up from 42.8 crores last quarter and 37% year on year growth uh, and almost 100 crores for the 6 months ended Uh, which is up 38 percent from last year. So this is on the consolidated results. We got the standalone results, which is for the consumer group. Uh, you know, contains car wale, bike wale, some of these brands. Um, revenues up uh, 23. Operating revenues up 23 percent, which is 55.62 crores. Other income is down because uh, of the acquisition of OLX last year. Cash balances have gone down. Uh, therefore, see a slight dip in our interest income. But operating revenues up 23 percent for the quarter, 20 percent six months at 106 crores. Um, it's been a strong Q quarter performance of the consumer group. I think that's the highest ever revenue in any quarter. Um, you see the employee costs and other costs well in control now, which shows the operating leverage. Even though the revenue is up, you know, quarter on quarter and year on year, 
you see the the actual costs overall expenses are flat or close to flat which is really resulting in this massive 464% growth q on q on ebitda and you know uh, last year 73 lakhs becoming 18.4 crores of ebitda in the first six months here so massive growth in both ebitda uh, over the small increase in revenue with increases in revenues uh, uh, pbt again is showing a 71% up to 19 crores and you know half yearly up at 30% to 32 crores um when you look at profit after tax uh, 15.75 versus uh, you know 12 crores last quarter and 10 crores last year is up at 55% uh, and 28 crores for the six months um, you know on, on the standard on side is up at 27% uh, so you see a strong operating performance here slightly lower other income that's because of the reduction in cash balances due to the acquisition of onex but overall again very very strong operating metrics being reported in the standard on results when you look at the remarketing results, which is on page eight, uh, you had a modest growth of about three percent in the in, in at fifty seven point twenty four and three percent for the year at one hundred and five point eight four. Uh, but we've kept the expenses under control, and there's been slight cost reduction, which has resulted in a thirty four percent growth in profit before tax at ten point two six crores and fourteen crores for the half yearly, which is up by twenty nine percent to last year. Uh, PAT is also up thirty two percent at seven point five nine crores. Um, and 10 crores for the six months uh, ended um, at 26% up from the last year. So generally a strong financial performance. Uh, we would like the revenue growth to be stronger, but the financial performance has been quite strong, even in Sri Ram Auto Mall and, and the remarketing group. Uh, when you look at the OLX results, uh, which is on page nine, uh, OLX, uh, obviously the growth over the previous quarter from 49.48 from 48.23. It is difficult to compare over last year just because only two months of operation during the first half of last year. But at six months now, we've achieved a 97.72 revenue, uh, 97 crores uh, point seven two revenue uh, for the six months ended uh, this, uh, September 24. EBITDA is up uh, at uh, you know Q1 Q from 805 to 855, uh, 8.55 crores, and half yearly is now at 16.6 crores. Uh, I see a small improvement margin from 17% on to 18% quarter on quarter. And PBT is up as well. Uh, PAT is 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 uh, is slightly down, uh, and that's partly mostly because of tax incurred on other income, on some of our interest income, we've incurred some tax, and that's why the PAT is slightly lower than the previous quarter. But generally, operations are stable. Uh, st we feel it's a reasonably strong financial performance. Uh, revenue growth is something you know we feel we'll achieve a stronger revenue growth. Something we'll achieve in the coming quarters, but generally a strong, stable performance from OLX as well. Um, you know, this is a good summary of the consolidated and subsidiary accounts in finance uh, and operating metrics. Um, I'd be happy to take questions now, uh, you know, from each one of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now wait for a moment as the question queue assembles. We have the first question from the line of Siddharth Bera from Nomaura. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks, sir. Uh, and uh, con hi sir, congrats on a good set of results and uh, happy Diwali greetings to the entire team as well. Uh, sir, first question I have on the uh, OLX business. So, if you see the ramp up, uh, now it's been like close to one year we have this business, uh, we are operating and running this. How do you think has been the performance? Uh, is uh, many of the improvement uh, still yet to play out or do you think... Uh, uh, it is taking longer. If you can guide us about how to look at the revenue scale up uh, in the OLX business and some more color about uh, which are the segments, any mix uh, or any more data if you can share uh, in terms of OLX, how the business is changing or what are we doing here to sort of uh, scale up the revenues uh, to be helpful. No, um, I think uh, um, happy Diwali to you as well. So that was, um, uh, the second thing is, you know, we've... Um, over the last, it's been about you know 11 months to the end of September uh, for the from the acquisition of like actually I mean sorry 13 months or so, and obviously the attempt in those first 13 months was around stability of technology platforms, 
uh, teams, uh, recruiting all the product technology teams, uh, you know, moving all of this technology and product to our own environment, stabilization and growth of traffic, consumer traffic, uh, you know, processes and sales, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, the segments are pretty much the same. It's, uh, you know, 45% of it is auto, used cars and uh, used two-wheelers, and the rest is non-auto, which is led by real estate jobs, electronics, mobiles, et cetera, et cetera. We've obviously, uh, uh, you know, there has been revenue growth in the last, you know, 30, 13 months of the of, you know, operation during this period. And, and we feel the, you know, a lot of the things we've done and a lot of the foundation we've laid, the, the, the significant part of that growth will come in the future. You know, when you take over a business, I think you lay a foundation where for the next five to 10 years, you can see that growth. So some of it has started to play out. Uh, you know, obviously the auto side is something we were more comfortable with. And obviously a lot of the initials were launched on the automotive side first. Uh, but now we are also working heavily on the non-automotive side, which is other segments of real estate mobiles and, you know, jobs, et cetera, et cetera. And we do feel in the coming quarters, uh, you know, we'll start seeing... Uh, a, a more, you know, st a stronger growth in revenue, I would say, across various sectors which we're working on there. So we feel very confident about that. Uh, we also feel very confident about the quality of traffic and users uh, of and the brand of OLX, right? I mean, almost 30 million people a month come um, every month. And, and as you know, we spend no advertising on OLX, uh, which is just shows the affinity of the brand, right? As one of the leading or, or probably the leading use product platform in the country, right? Where people can come in and sell their products or buy used products, right? So we feel a lot of the initiatives we're taking will will and a lot of the growth which is uh, will will show in the next few quarters by the initiatives we've taken in the last 13 months. But when we took over the business, it's important to bring full stability and transfer of technology and and, and product to our environment first. So that's that's what we did. And, and but we feel now we're actually working on the business very hard uh, on various aspects of sales processes and other things to make sure or to or, or and, and put up a strong foundation for growth in the future quarters coming ahead. Got it, sir. Uh, so, second question is on the consumer business, where uh, we did see a very good uh, growth sort of playing out. Uh, here again, if you can throw some light about how is the mix between OE and uh, new and used car, and uh, have, where is basically the, the stronger traction if you are seeing uh, in, in any particular segment worth highlighting? You know, the consumer group is mostly 85% uh, new vehicles, right? As you know. Um, and uh, there itself, uh, the car industry has been had a very modest 2%, 3% growth in the first six months of the year. In fact, in the last two, three months, it's been degrowing. Um, and the two-wheel industry also had a robust growth of 18 19% for six months, as, as, as you know, the, the industry has been. Um, we've actually seen growth across segments, uh, uh, across all new used segments, Um I, I feel one of the one of the, the, the even though the industry of car growth the, the growth in the car industry only two three percent it is still you know at a high base of last year and that's helped us as well um, so we feel good about the, the car industry as well as the two wheel industry and the used car industry the way they stand um, some of the results have come in the first six months and we just hope and we think that some of this will play out still in the next two three quarters coming um, so it's it's been a, a reasonably strong performance from the consumer group, both on the car side, bike side, new and use both, I think. Uh, Got it. So lastly, on this auction business, uh, now volume seems to have uh, gone up quite a bit compared to last quarter or year in the current quarter. So are we uh, looking at any signs of turnaround in this business also as we enter the second half of the year? Uh, how do you think uh, this business also uh, may take uh, still longer for some of the recovery to play out? We think that this, you know, definitely seems to have bottomed out the repossession cycle, right? It, it doesn't seem to be getting, uh, you know, it seems to have bottomed out. Um, we do feel confident that this business now is seems to be, you know, getting better. Uh, and of course, the other segments when repossession has gone down, we build other segments, which are also helping at this point of time. So it's a mixture, a little bit of cost control, a little bit of revenue growth, but we do feel that in the next couple of quarters, Samuel should deliver a reasonable performance. Um, and um, it's it's hard for us to right now say whether the repossession in banks and NBFC is getting stronger or not. I mean, you know, it's it's a little early to say that, but we do feel it's bottomed out, if that's for sure. Yeah. Got it, sir. Thanks a lot. I'll come Thank back and thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. The next question is from the line of Ankit K from SmartSync. Please go ahead. Yes. Yeah. 
thank you for taking the question and congratulations on both setup thank you okay. yeah so my first question is related to the you know, to all the three segments actually so if i look at the segmental uh, revenues coincidentally uh, all three businesses are having roughly the quarterly revenue run rate of 50 crore today and uh, but when you look at the life cycle of all the three businesses probably they all three are com- uh, are completely different in their life cycle as in uh, so i just wanted to know from your side i'm not looking for any guidance but just directionally how do you see these business these three businesses three distinctly different kind of businesses growing or doing from here over the next say 3 to 5 years uh, qualitatively speaking not i'm not talking at any numbers but how do you see them then yeah so sure. um yeah thank you for the question i think the first part is because the consumer group which is car wale bike wale is 85% new vehicles right which is uh, cars and two wheelers and obviously um, you know we feel with the car industry um, you know india is the largest two wheeler market in the world right it is also in the top five car markets of the world and naturally for a country is to grow um when you look at the penetration of cars in india if you are going to be at 30 or 40 or 1000 the penetration is extremely low so you do feel over a long period of time few to five years what you asked the car industry will grow and the two wheel industry will continue to grow um with personal mobility on the rise um and therefore we feel very strongly of the health of the consumer group by itself which is 85% dependent on new vehicles right uh, we also feel um you know for us if we had seen two three years ago it is it is harder because you know when there was a semiconductor issue and other supply chain issues in the automotive industry and and demand was more than supply it affected us because they stopped manufacturing and dealers advertising on our platform uh, because they didn't need to they were you know sold out because of just the <clears throat> the uh, you know availability of vehicles was low when the availability is is high which is what the situation is today where supply is more than demand it's a little more favorable for the company and we do see a, a, a strong uh you know demand cycle for the next 3 to 5 years in the automotive industry but we also see supply being available and therefore we feel very confident about you know the consumer group by itself over you know a 3 to 5 period a period and and obviously what our attempt is not only uh you know is to is to go as as you said earlier in car wale or in bike wale to not to, to move from a situation or or go deeper into our transactions with our manufacturers and dealers and uh, for our customers to not only be able to find their car select their car you know uh, connect to a dealer online but also tomorrow buy cars online so we're moving and building technology and going deeper and deeper in that process for you know all our customers and dealers and manufacturers so naturally we feel confident about that on the shiram autom side in the last year and a half with the possession uh, of vehicles coming down and supply to us coming down from that source we had built a whole retail segment which is almost 40% of our business today so obviously we believe optimistic about growing the retail side of the business but we also believe in times to come with financing going up you know uh, demand for vehicles going up on new vehicles repossession uh, will also grow and obviously in the next 3 to 5 years we feel good both the retail and the repossession market will grow and you know shira motor mall will be a strong player will be a big beneficiary of that so we feel confident about that and then the third you know is olex where the tam of the business we operate in is limitless right it is basically handles all used products in india it's, it's the number one or leading place where any consumer can sell a used product or buy a used product so we obviously feel uh, that 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 tam in india is just as i said limitless i can't put a number to it even um we are we are, we, we have a large set of indian consumers who who i, I mean as, as some of the data we shared before more than 30 million users a month come on olex uh to sell a product to buy a product use product and and we have obviously a significant leadership here so there's limitless growth opportunities here whether it's used cars whether it is used bikes whether it's used mobile phones uh um uh, or or you know goods household goods uh like furniture etc etc or even you know homes um and we feel very confident about olex's future here as well for the next 2 to 5 years so on the whole across all three businesses we see tremendous amount of levers to grow i think one thing i want to add here as you might know that and we demonstrated successfully over the last 5 6 quarters is that every increase in revenue in this company the uh, you know results in a very strong profit growth we have a lot of levers in our business as normally when our revenue go up only a small amount of manpower cost goes up with it mm-hmm. uh, but a large part of the revenue growth you know leads to profitability which you've seen got it got it thank you so much for the detailed answer is it is it fair to assume that uh, say 3 to 5 years down the line probably 
uh, our uh, consumer business will form a large chunk of our revenue uh, compared to what it is today because that is probably the fastest growing also no we don't think so i i think we think all the three businesses have opportunities i mean they're all similar size today uh, but we don't it's 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 hard for us to say that one way bigger than the other they all have their reasonably opportunity to grow so i i, I won't want to predict that the consumer group yeah. would be the largest or olex would be the largest or or shriya motor mall would be the largest i won't want to predict that right now yeah. so but but they all have the reasons to grow yeah. yeah got it got it yeah so second question is related to the competition so ever since we uh, got listed and we started doing con calls and presentation uh one slide which has been always there is the uh, is the is what you share regarding the google trends where car value is always on top compared to all the other uh, competitors which you share uh when i look at the on ground uh, feedback from uh, maybe customers or dealers uh we get some really good uh, uh, feedback about the competitors also in terms of the business uh, uh which is happening yeah. Can you share one reason why on Google Trends we are so high on the chart and consistently? Uh, it's a brand, right? So, so Google Trends is basically how many people search your name, whether it's Olex or car wale or bike wale, into the search for your name, right? Uh, and come to the platform, which means that it is uh, the number of people who remember car wale versus other people. That's what it is. It's a it's a digital brand index. and that's what it is it's got nothing to do with dealers it's got to do with consumers it's 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 the reason the 77 million maus come to these platforms just to give you context 77 million people a month come to car wale bike wale and all like that's a huge number and 95% come in an organic manner which means we don't pay for it it's completely free of advertising that's why we have the margins we have in the company because 95% of our users come without any advertising cost which is partly a reflection of google trends as you see right and which is why you know the, the, the consumer group or car trade tech as a company is extremely profitable is because of the brand affinity of car wale bike wale or rolex these are strong brands now in the businesses they run um and that's a reflection of google trends it's got nothing to do with talking to dealers actually it's it's not connected with that it's a consumer okay. thank you so much uh, that was very thank you and thank uh, you. all the best for the future thank you thank you sir participants if you wish to ask a question you may press star and one on your touchstone telephone the next question is from the line of sachin dikshit from jm financial please go ahead hey hi vinay congrats on great set of results uh it's me coming to questions so uh, i wanted to understand uh that we did discuss that on overlex side obviously there are a bunch of low hanging fruits that we can probably cater to first of all um i wanted to just so check on that question. the voice for this much can you say it again please so i was saying that on olx side uh, yes. you we have discussed that there are a bunch of low hanging fruits that we can cater to in order mm-hmm. to deliver the growth that we wanted i want to just get an update on that where do we stand on that have we have we seen any ramp up in terms of advertising income coming from olx or any price hikes or any such things can you please even update on that so sure. uh, you know no let i think what the things we've been working on as far as the automotive side which is use car the use car classified side of olx right uh, and um, you know uh, and then the non automotive side there's also an advertising side which is you know driven by advertisers coming and putting this advertising on olx right the three different revenue sources in a way um there is i, I would say a lot of work has gone in I, I wouldn't say that you know a lot of the revenue what we you know what we feel you know would kick in very quickly has all come in. I, I think we'll we will probably see some of this growth coming in the next two to three quarters. Um, and uh, you know obviously a lot of the foundation platform work is done right, which is you know the product side, technology side, people side, right, uh, processes side. So many small small things uh, after the MNA. But as I said, you know some of it has come in in terms of revenue growth, which you can see. and some of it is a lot of it yet to come and we just feel like you know olex is a kind of platform where we'll always be saying this over the next 3 to 5 years because this is so much the time is limitless as we say right once we get one side we go to the other side and keep going deeper and deeper to monetize more and more aspects of of the platform right and get more and more consumers on board so it's a non stop effort i think we we all are spending lots and lots of hours you know on it um and we do feel in the coming quarters you'll see some of that Uh, and even in the coming years, not just the quarters, because as I said, there's just no limit to what can be achieved in OLX over the next five to ten years. 
Sure, understood. Uh, so, uh, quickly on revenue side on OLX again, right? So, we delivered roughly 2% pure Q growth. Uh, now, yeah. if you recall, like uh, when this acquisition happened last year, we did talk about almost 20 plus percent plus odd growth. Uh, in order to deliver that, it looks like we'll need to deliver anywhere between 30 odd percent, 30, 32 odd percent YY growth over H2. <laughs> Uh, do you think uh, we are on track for that, or or that's uh, that's going to be a miss on that piece? I don't know. I don't want to give any guidance on revenue. You know, as I said, such uh, we don't normally give any guidance. So we're working on obviously all the growth levers, and you know, some of them will happen next six months. Some will happen the six months after that. Uh, but but all I can say is we do see a very long term, uh, you know, growth opportunity here. I, I I don't want to talk about the next three months or six months very specifically. Uh, I think the one thing that's happening in OLX is that every quarter we get better than the last one, right? Uh, and not just in OLX. I think that applies to the consumer group and as well, where we actually make progress every single quarter. If you see the numbers, and almost every single quarter, we're year on year better, right? So we, we keep doing that. And some of it will play out now, some will play out after three months, six months. But, you know, the effort is to continuously do that. And, and as I said, again, when we grow our revenue, the margin expansion is quite high, right? The moment we grow revenue. Right, yeah, that's so. Uh, coming to new auto side quickly on that piece, like we delivered uh, close to 23% growth uh, in the quarter, while auto industry continues to struggle, uh, to say the least. Uh, do you see this trend sustaining? Obviously, you have highlighted that this is probably the best time when advertisements will speak. Uh, yeah, we but, see we see some of this continuing. I think I, I do feel like October, December uh, normally is a better quarter than even, you know, the immediate, then even July to September, normally every year. I don't think that's changed at all. I, I do think October, December, it is going to be better. And and, and probably this trend might continue. It's possible that, uh, you know, I, I do see that volumes are generally at the highest ever for two wheelers and cars. Even though the growth is lower for cars, or, or the absolute no growth, but the volumes are pretty high. And supply is higher than demand. So it's a good, it's a, it's a, it's reasonably a favorable market condition, I would say. So the reason why I asked that question was last year in H2, our YOI growth dipped quite sharply compared to H1. Uh, so that's why I am asking this question. So the growth, do they the, expect... the growth rate may be lower. Yeah, growth rate dipped. Yeah, growth rate dipped. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. which is where I'm coming from. Like, do you see that growth yeah. rate, uh, like this 23% odd YOI growth rate sustaining in H2? Or we I, can don't, I, I don't want to give a guidance on growth yeah. rate, but all I can say is normally the market can be slightly better. Um, and I do feel like these quarters will be better than the previous quarter. That's what I do feel. Is that? Is, but I, I can't. I don't want to give appropriate guidance. No worries. Thanks so much. Happy Diwali. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Sachin. Thank you. Happy Diwali. Thank you, sir. We have the next question from the line of Akshay Satija from Alpha Infesco. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, congratulations on this set of news and happy Diwali to all of you. Happy Diwali. Uh, so my first question will be for our remarketing business. Sorry, EBITDA per car seems to have improved uh, from what it was in Q1. So I just wanted to understand, is it uh, because of contribution from maybe retail sales, higher number of retail sales, or it's just that, uh, as you said, it's the operating leverage that we sold more cars? It's also some cost. It's also the remarketing. There's also some cost reduction, uh, but okay. uh, it, is, it is also um, you know the product mix has not changed much. Uh, but it's, there is some cost reduction as well, which will help. Okay, if you could specify the numbers for retail and B two B that you do for remarketing. Um, you know, Anisha, you want to give it, but I think it's forty percent is retail, which is quite similar to what it was earlier, thirty nine earlier. It's forty now, I think. So it's quite similar. Okay. Actually. Not much is Okay. Uh, sir, could you also share the uh, new versus used car ratio for the consumer business? And if you could just go a little into detail for the app store business that we have. So, what would be sort of revenues? Uh, my belief is that we report app store under the consumer business. So, what would be the revenues or volumes for the app store business and how many uh, stores that we hold of app store uh, as of now? Sure. So, I think the first part, about 86%. 6% is new in the consumer group. Um, that's one, which is pretty similar to what it was in 85 and now it's 86%. Um, and that's the first question. The second question is App Short. Uh, so, uh, you know, Anisha, you want to tell how many outlets we have, but like App Short plus which are outlets are actually growing. What's that? What is that? 165. 165 are the number of outlets. 
Yeah. Uh, we normally don't discuss the volume and the revenue as yet, uh, but the 165 outlet is something obviously we are growing, and not only are we growing it here. I think OLX is a very similar number of uh, OLX branded stores as well for used cars, right? Am, am I right? It's a similar number. Yeah. About one. Uh, so, I, sorry, what? About 170. 170. So they're totally actually 335 such stores now. So the intent of these stores, I'll be honest, was uh, and still is, is the ability for a consumer to come online and, you know, select a good certified car and then buy it with a, you know, and, and eventually buy it in a one-click experience so they can actually have a completely online uh, you know, experience. Um, and we're working towards that. But the, but the coverage actually has improved with the OLX acquisition. So 165 actually become about 330 now, or 340 stores. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, so, my final question would be: Could you just elaborate a little on the uh, the automobile uh, stores and on that front? So, say we list roughly 1.2 million cars a year, but we are selling only 20 percent of those cars. Just wanted to understand what happens to the rest of the cars. Are they kept as an inventory, not with us, but uh, with someone who's listing it with us? Just wanted to understand: Is that inventory carried forward to the next quarters or? Uh, just wanted to understand the business plan. Sure, sure. Uh, for, you know, first, uh, a last part of that inventory does not come physically. It's not, I don't have the exact number, right? But uh, a, a large percentage only comes online. It doesn't ever so, come physically to us in the auto mall. So, some percentage so, comes physically. And even in that percentage, if the, if the seller decides not to sell it, they can take the vehicle okay. back and then give it back, you know, whenever they feel, you know, they would like so, to sell it again. So, so the the twenty I think it's twenty five or twenty eight percent is a, is a conversion ratio, which is okay. of every hundred vehicles coming to auction that many get sold. I think that's what it is. Okay. Okay. Do you see this number probably could go up or? Uh... No, it's been quite stable actually. It's not gone up. It's not gone. Up. It's been quite stable. I think the conversion ratio would probably be stable. Our attempt here is of course to improve conversion ratio by getting more buyers and, uh, but it's also okay. through uh, increasing volume. On supply, I think there are two different efforts here, but but we don't see much. There's not been much change over the last couple of years in the percentage actually. All right, that's it from my side. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one on your touchstone phone if you wish to ask a question. We have next question from the line of Vijit Jain from City Group. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Um, and uh, hi, 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 Anisha. Congratulations on great two Q across the three businesses. Uh, my first question is, you know, so you, you know, I note on the presentation that organic traffic growth was especially stronger than the overall growth this quarter. But it, you did increase your standalone marketing spends about 20% this year, this quarter, right? So my question, I guess, is um, uh, is that is that with an eye towards the next half of the year, are you seeing any trends which makes you uh, want to increase your marketing spend here? And I think a related question to that is, you know, in addition to what you show on Google Trends, uh, one can see on app traffic and other third-party data sources as well that you have taken... Uh, you know, market share in both cars and bikes uh, from the competitors this year, uh, especially on the bike side. So if you could give a view on, you know, what is happening there really, uh, have is your business in the bike side, for example, particularly higher now this year versus last year? Yeah, okay. The first is the uh, marketing spend. No, marketing spend is yeah. in these businesses is very, um, um, I would say tactical, but it's very, uh, it's not brand driven expense or, or traffic driven expense is very targeted at manufacturers who may want to sell a certain kind of product and and who are spending money on advertising and they try and you know build a specific uh consumers for them and that traffic and that advertising is incurred with them 20 percent is up but it's a very small number i mean the, the numbers are really small here right, right? our total yeah yeah, yeah. Are insignificant so the amounts are very insignificant here that's one right um i i would not think and correlate that uh, with uh, any increase in advertising or any significant increase in advertising spend in the next six months i would not think that would happen it may be directly a little bit in correlation with a little bit of revenue but it's not likely to go up substantially in the next six months at all uh this is also not driving the growth in traffic as you said the, the, the actually the organic percentages are going up it's 95 percent yeah. now across platforms so it is going up the brands are getting stronger we are consumer traffic actually in absolute terms if you see um, it is in the deck as well in one of the last few slides, it's substantially up. So, uh, you know, the quantum of traffic up 
not be done by advertising. This is just done on brand and organic basis. Uh, two wheelers has gone up a lot, and so has cars gone up. So both traffic on both concepts gone up. Uh, uh, you know, we do feel that one is that uh, you know, as I said earlier, the, the, the demand for cars is not down. It's just that the growth rate is down, right? If you look at the first six months, it actually, uh, it's it's grown by two three percent. So it's not it's not it's not negative. Right, number one. Mm-hmm. Number two, the two-wheel industry has been very, very strong, which has shown growth in every parameter, right? I mean, the volumes have gone up, traffic is, of course, going up, everything is going up. So, uh, it is, it's a massive opportunity for us as well, the two-wheeler side. But both cars and two-wheelers have been quite healthy. So, uh, the tra- in fact, the traffic growth has been, been very, very healthy, I would say. Also, some of the new launches has fueled this, right? I mean, we have had a couple of big launches in the car market where there's right. been a lot of interest on, on traffic, right? I mean, the traffic side. Mm-hmm. Right. So, in a, any broad sense on, you know, uh, I, I don't know if you want to, uh, if you don't want to disclose, you know, split between, say, two-wheelers and four-wheelers, maybe some sense in terms of, you know, what growth rate you saw in the two categories this year? Um, it's been strong on both sides, I would say. Um, I mean, two-wheelers on a smaller base, right? So, it's outpaced the growth. But generally, it's been strong both places. Um The revenue split is something, Anisha, have you given the revenue split on two-wheelers and four-wheelers? No, not yet. Okay. Not yet. Not yet. Okay, because it's quite okay. It's actually we didn't mix up business in OEMs and dealers, not so much on two wheelers and cars. Right. I think that's the reason we've given the OEM and dealer split. Um, right. Yeah, but but the 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 I I think we see robustness in both actually cars and two wheelers both is growing. Got it. Great. And my next question is, you know, uh, the remarketing business, right? So uh, I guess uh, uh, the shift, uh, the mix shifted a little bit in the repo favor this quarter because obviously I can see, you know, the auctions went up, uh, but the realizations went down. So yeah, sure. uh, I, 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 better. I think there's some su- suppressed pricing of used products as well, used vehicles as well, hmm. which is affected a little bit. But but generally, that's why I said reposition seems to have bottomed out. It's it's always hard to predict because not something in our control, uh, right. but seems to have bottomed out. What I said earlier in the call, it seems to be a little better. Right, and uh, you have, you know, I mean, uh, I think you mentioned it uh, around the end of four Q results, but uh, you have added about a hundred locations across, uh, you know, Sri Ram Auto Mall, uh, Appshore, and OLX this calendar year, right? I think last four Q you were around three fifty, now you are at four fifty, thereabouts. So, could you give us a sense of where you, you know these additions are coming? Are these mostly in Appshore here, or no, in, mostly, uh, in thing, mostly in Appshore Signature and OLX? They're not. They're not in. Uh, so it's, it's, right. it's, all, it's almost all there. Right. And, and uh, so, so basically about 50 to 100 uh, store ads on probably, the actual side. Probably, this probably closer. I don't know the exact number. But almost all the additions will be there. I mean, I think when, I don't think I'm on three, four auto malls. Am I right? Could be more than, I mean, maybe five. They don't, we don't really add very many auto malls. So it's mostly come in um, OLX and in, 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 in Appshore. So with Absure, do you think you could, uh, this is this is a pace uh, that you could uh, probably continue yeah, to? Logically the pace, yeah. There's a lot of work to be done on the pace, which is like probably will continue, uh, okay. both on the OLX side and the Absure slash signature outlets. What you're looking at doing is obviously adding a lot more tech and product to it, and over time, as consumers want, the whole idea of creating this to also to give a differentiated experience to a user on Carvale or on OLX, right? And I think that is still something you're working on. Distribution seems to be catching on, but now we've got to also, when you come as a consumer, provide this, you know, one click, like ability to buy a used car if you want to do so, right? It, it, I think that maturity will also come in consumers over time, right? So it's, it's a combination of all of that. Got it. And my last question, Vinay, um, uh, just the OLX business, um, given the nature of the business, um, the, the October, November, December quarter should have a fair bit of seasonality related uptick. Uh, I mean, not just, uh, I mean, I know you said that for the auto business, but uh, also yeah, for the non auto parts. It should be better. It should be better because normally October, November, October is definitely normally better. Uh, November is the holidays and stuff, so you don't always know. Uh, because right. Diwali, you know, by then people come back, uh, by then I'm. Businesses really start all over again, right? But but generally, this o- OND is normally o- you know is normally a little better than July to September. Yeah, yeah. So so the question I was trying to uh, you know uh, the answer I was trying to get to also in part when I was uh, you know uh, we have a lot of these festive season sales that the e-commerce yeah. platforms run, and I would imagine some of that will drive traffic to yours for used transactions. Is that a fair understanding of how this would work? 
no, I don't think they're really connected with, uh, even though you're right, these e-commerce platforms have sales. I'm not convinced that directly correlated with, uh, you know, the traffic on OLX or uh, definitely not car wale. Um, but, but I would think that, you know, um, just, 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 just a season is normally better for anybody, right? I think mm-hmm. it, normally October is always, you know, this year, Diwali and the Shara both happen to be in the same month as well. So it normally, it is a strong month always. Correct. Uh, yeah, yeah. Understood. Thanks, Sir. Those were my questions and uh, happy Diwali to you and Anisha. Thank happy you. Diwali. Thank you, Rajit. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. We have the next question from the line of Rahul Rahan, Rahul Ranade from Goldman Sachs Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Hi, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Hi, Rahul. Happy Diwali, Vinay. Happy Diwali, Rahul. So just a couple of questions. So one you got answered partially in terms of seasonality for OLX. So, so you're saying there could be some bit of a seasonality element in Q3. So that that, that is answered. But uh, just on the other side, uh, OEM to dealer, we used to share this split earlier on. Uh, did we share that now? Yeah, we can give it. Can you give the OEM? 60, was it 67? Yeah, 67. 67%. 67.33. Okay. It's not changed much. I think it's just it's just modern as we I mean, Okay. Yeah. Okay. So 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 uh, is it the right understanding when when we say you know new to use is eighty five fifteen? Yeah. Then yeah. this sixty seven thirty three. This sixty seven right. is out of the eighty five, and then the thirty three uh, is, is a split right. between the right. new and used. Yeah. That is right. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. And lastly, just wanted to check in terms of progress on, you know, these allied, uh, you know, services that we, you know, kind of talk when we say, you know, buying vehicles at the click of a button. So, so let's yeah. say financing or insurance, have they started contributing to our revenue in any way in terms of? Uh, they are very small uh, revenues. Insurance is not financing in a very small, you know, revenue uh, contributor. Uh, but the important thing is the tech and all of that has started to play in, right? So you can see on almost all our platforms now that one keeps using it alone, right? I think I, I, those are the kind of things and a lot of the products were launched, whether it's AppShore or, or this loans to enable a lot of the future transactions might come online um, as consumers want to do more and more. So the, when you buy a loan today and you come to car wale or bike wale or OLX even now uh, and you apply online and you get sanctioned instantly by multiple, multiple banks and vendors, um, you know, you got a sanction, but from mm-hmm. sanction to disbursement is not necessarily that all the banks and you know uh, other partners are ready to at this point or able to do it even at this point. Right? It requires also document documentation, KYC of customers, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, as for their processes. So it's not fully. I would say the product is although gives you a sanction instantly, it doesn't still probably give you a loan in account in the next you know one minute or something, right? I mean the disbursements, the, the sanction disbursement cycle is not fully online yet. Mm. Got it. Got it. So, so the meaningful attrition in terms of monetization only will only happen when that piece also falls in place. Is that the right? I think the important monetization might improve that, but, but that's not the intent here. The intent was always that we uh, give this journey to the buyer, to, a, to a car buyer or two-wheeler buyer or used product buyer. Then this is when you buy a product, you can get a loan instantly. So you can buy the car online. If you, like a last part of two-wheelers and cars are financed. So if you don't get the loan instantly, then buying a car on one click on one is, is almost impossible, right? Because if you want to loan, the journey is anyway going to get broken, right? And I think that's what we work with banks and you know other other stakeholders to to see if this journey can be complete online. Hmm. Got it. And got it. More from a customer experience angle, monetization is one you know one one thing, but it's also experience. Yeah. 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 Understood. And just lastly, you know, this is not very car trade or car wale specific. I just wanted to understand from a financing penetration standpoint, uh, if if you know you were to look, let's say, four or five years back to now, uh, for used vehicles, both used cars and used two wheelers, do you see a significantly greater proportion of you know people going for financing for their used vehicles, or you know, is it? More or less the same. Think, how how... new cars? So new cars, as you know, is for the last four or five years, maybe last ten years, it's been it's very very high the percentage. In yeah, used cars, yeah. we've actually seen it being not move much. Um, I feel like um, the industry has grown one, and second bigger thing is that you still don't have, you know, a large number of organized financials financing used cars, right? 
a lot of people buying used cars are taking loans you know from uh, you know uh, unorganized sources right it could be a personal loan it could be you know um, if we, like a personal unsecured loan or it could be even be you know from an employer or someone else right so mm-hmm. you find you feel like you know the long long way to go in used financing in india mm-hmm. it's a, it's actually a massive opportunity i think um, for any bank or any ndfc it's just a big big opportunity understood understood thanks thanks you nepal ji thank you thanks sir thank you so much sir the next question is from the line of mohit madhivala from envision capital please go ahead hello and uh, thank uh, thank you for taking hello. my questions uh, great set of members so congratulations on that uh just a few bookkeeping questions uh number one i can see on the balance sheet that um the in, in, in the non current assets other financial assets have gone up uh while in the current financial uh, other financial assets have gone down kind of in a similar amount so just wanted to understand what that movement has been firstly what is the relation you want to explain that i'm sorry a point your question is that your other financial assets have come down and the investments have gone up is that the question uh no uh, so my question is that in the current assets part of it uh, it has gone down by about 50 crore from uh, mm-hmm. march 31st to september 30th uh whereas in the non current part it has gone up by 58 crore so just wanted to understand uh, what this is related to just in a second because most of it would be just the yeah. uh, fixed deposits we would have moved it to investment in mutual fund so can you know just Okay, God bless you. It must be right. And so, was in Subaic or Tanisha? Was in Subaic or? And no, both the Nigel and Samuel have been something, but no other change. Okay. All cash balance is in two batches, three crores. Okay. Okay. Uh, next question was basically that uh, there's a there's been a bad debt written off of, and this is a very small amount, but of seventy five lakh. So just wanted to understand where this has come from. Tanisha, you want to? I don't remember. I don't remember which client it was, but. Is it a consumer group? Uh, yes, and we have done a cleanup for uh, debtors which are more than three years. We have kept provisions right. in the uh, only what was beyond three years is what we have written off this year. Yeah. So what we do is uh, the, the provisioning of course as per uh, you know our accounting policies, and right. then we move from provisions to writing off. I think that's what's called. We move from provision bucket to the write off bucket. Yes. Yes. It's fully provided. Okay. Okay. Got okay, it. But it's fully provided for earlier anyway, is what I'm sure she's saying. Okay. Got it. um and the ease of course we are still at the run rate of uh, 6 crore per quarter right so this is expected to continue going ahead yeah i think i think for this year it is going to be similar it it should you know as per the vesting schedule come down from next year further uh, yeah right. at this point it'll continue yeah through this year and 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 i think i think it comes down uh, next year uh, as per the vesting schedules so for fy25 we would still be at around a full year 24 crore kind of on an ease of loss that's right and that's right slightly lower than fy26 still come down in 25 in 26 will come down that's correct okay got it and uh, just one last question uh, what would be a reasonable kind of overall tax rate to assume for the full year fy25 because we are uh, currently at around 21% uh, on an effective tax rate so just wanted to understand where we can end for the full year Given all the oil that uh, kind of let's say losses uh, would have been absorbed, is not. I, I think there is no. Uh, Anisha is correct me if I'm wrong, but there is no tax in oil X, right? And there is no yeah. tax in mm-hmm. in, the, in the standalone entity. There's only tax in Sri Lanka Motor Mall. The yeah. tax yeah. I see on 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 the standalone entity is deferred mm-hmm. tax, which has come from the change in the budget on how um, you know our treasury income is is being treated, right? Um, mm-hmm. I think it's this whole change from long-term capital gains tax on debt funds, right? Uh, which is the entry you see is not actually pertaining to the quarter it's pertaining to um a previous period so, right, so I see. yeah so the deferred tax will probably continue a couple of more quarters this year mm-hmm. and then we go away it will not be there anymore um so but generally there's no tax in the standalone or in all excess here is right okay so i think i missed spoke previously the effective tax rate uh, for this quarter is 17% Uh, so that's yeah, why it's, that's what the question is. Mostly deferred tax, tax, which is right, which is right, actually, right. But change in the budget, right? When they move the syndication okay. on okay. mutual fund. Got it, got it. So we, even for the full year, it would be at like uh, what below twenty five percent. It's exactly the same. It, this increase oh, okay. is exactly the same to the year. Yeah. Great, great. Okay, thank you so much, and uh, best of luck. Tax uh, will be lower because the profit goes up. The effective right. tax rate should come down. This this amount of deferred tax is identical for next two quarters. 
So the profit went up, the effective tax you'd see would go down actually. Because on our normal business income, there's no tax. Okay, understood. Great. Uh, thank you, sir. And uh, good luck for the future. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have the next question from the line of Sachin Dikshit from JM Financial. Please go ahead. I have an answer. Uh, I have a couple of bookkeeping questions as well. Um, so the first one being that when I'm adding the depreciation expense across the three segments, uh, our it's not matching up with the console number by a decent margin. Uh, why is that the case? What is not uh, what is not matching? Sorry. De depreciation expense and this this is consistent across a few years and quarters. Like this is what we keep on seeing. Yes, Sachin. You say you saying when you add up depreciation doesn't total. That's what you say. Yes. Because there's an entry or add consolidation such, and there is a contract asset that we've created on the Samal acquisition. That entry gets passed only at consolidation. So the one plus one will not equal to the uh, equal to the consolidated number of depreciation. It's an entry which comes with set of accounts. Is it fair to assume that we use that plug to be a part of Shina Motorball business or the marketing business? Can you think of segments? No, it's a very specific entry for the Shiram acquisition, which was done in 2018, where a contract asset was created. Uh, it's a depreciation on that particular asset which is created in the consolidated set of accounts. It's not It's not to do with OLX or consumer group. It's only for the Shiram acquisition. Yeah, understood. Uh, a second question is on lease liabilities. So uh, we are seeing that those lease liabilities went up by roughly 10 or so uh, between uh, March 31st and September 30th. Considering that the business is largely non-asset heavy, uh, where are these lease liabilities rising from? No, it's also from uh, OLX, right? I think that's where it comes from. Yes. Correct. Yeah. No, but but is rental for OLX, right? Because that's it's true. only been two months. The year. Last year was only two months, one and a half months, and this year is the whole year. Yes. Oh, but this is a balance sheet entry, right? You were giving a snapshot as of March 31st or September 30th. Number of months uh, accounted, that should not make a change. Because, such in which number are you comparing? The balance sheet mm -hmm. early is. Yeah, in, in balance sheet, these liabilities of March 31st were 112 CR. They went yes. to 122. This uh, September 30th. Uh, what are these increases coming? Where are these coming from? The increase is coming from Samal. There are about seven Samal. million users added in Samal. I mean, from the compared to that you see from March to September. Understood. Understood. All right. Thanks so much. That's it. Thank you so much. We will take this as our last question for the day. I would now like to hand the conference over to management for closing comments. Uh, thank you for everybody for joining this earnings call, and we are quite, you know, buoyant by the by the by the quarter we've just had, um, and look forward to talking to you again in, in the next quarter. Happy Diwali to to you and all your families. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. On behalf of Cartrade Tech Limited, we conclude this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your line. Thank you.